So today's video is a little bit different than normal. It's a pretty specific video and so if you're not too interested in selling tickets on your website you might want to skip over this one if you're a normal subscriber but today we're going to be talking about the best and cheapest and reliable way to sell tickets on your WordPress website and we sold just about 3,000 tickets recently and so I wanted to post this review because I think this is a pretty sought-after topic which is how can I sell tickets reliably without breaking the bank on my website so today I'm gonna to be going over that and I, th I think it's gonna be a really good video and a lot of good information in this video so I hope you guys stay tuned to the end of the video So check the description as I've, I'm going to lay out a table of contents on what I cover and uh, at what times they occur in the video because this is going to be a pretty long video, longer than I normally do. And so I'm going to try and make this as detailed as I can because when I was going through trying to figure out how to sell tickets on a website that I run, um, a lot of these questions I had and I couldn't find any good answers other than some blogs that I, I came across. So I wanted to make a video on this. So like I said, I think this is a pretty sought after topic for people who have WordPress websites and are trying to sell tickets to events or any kind of online tickets and that question is how can I sell tickets reliably online without breaking the bank uh, there's a hundred there's you know hundreds and hundreds of online ticket companies that will help you sell tickets and the fees typically range anywhere from 15 percent to 30 percent and in my eyes you know that's kind of a stiff fee I mean you're, you're trying to sell your tickets because you're trying to make money and you've got a company that's gonna be taking upwards of 30 percent of your profit you know so I had a customer that hired me to redesign their website and part of what I sold them on was that I could save them over five thousand dollars in ticket fees that they were, they were paying to their old ticket provider who uh, recently had started doing a horrible job and their online checkout process was a complete disaster so I started researching what my options were and I came across a really popular WordPress plugin called Takeera. And after doing some pre-sales questions with them and a few other companies that I compared them with, they were able to answer all of my questions and even the technical ones. And so as I was dealing with them, I felt really comfortable giving them a try. And so one of my hesitations was that there were not many reviews online uh, talking about their experience with the plugin. I mean, I found some text reviews, but no like video reviews, nothing that in detail. And so I'm going to hopefully show that to you because I've had very good success with them. And I think that this plugin and this ticket selling solution is a very good solution. I'm not, I'm not in any way paid to do this review. They didn't ask me to do this review. I'm really sharing my experience because I, I think I've found something that a lot of people could benefit from and a lot of people could save a lot of money uh, looking at this plugin and looking at this company so um, I'm just sharing my my uh, thoughts on this plugin so with that said I'm gonna go into depth about them and how they differ from other companies and why you may choose them and why you may not want to choose them because you know they're they are different than other companies so I'm not saying that this is gonna be a 100% fit for everyone I mean there's reasons why you might not want to choose them so listen to this review so let's get into some of the details Takara has been around since 2014 now I didn't use them in the very beginning as I've just recently started using them in 2018 but of course there were some bugs and issues in the beginning I've read through a lot of their change log for the plugin It'd be just because I wanted to kind of get a feel for the history of, of what's been going on and it's been very stable from at least probably 2015 or 2016 so it's been very stable for a while Takara takes no fees from any of your ticket sales you pay for the plugin and that's it the price for the plugin is $99 a year or you can buy the lifetime plugin which means you pay $449 one time and you never have to pay again I mean in my books that is alone is so cheap considering that they will save you so much money you know in fact the ticket plugin actually allows you to set your own fees that you can charge your customers and you are getting that fee so now you're actually turning the table and, and you can actually make money by using this plugin 
So for example, if you wanted to recuperate your credit card processing fees, you can charge that fee onto the customer. Now the customer doesn't really know that you're getting that money. They just know that, you know, there's a, a convenience fee or whatever you want to call it and that they're paying that. And so unfortunately, this is the unfortunate thing. So many companies nowadays, you know, it's the normal to pay fees when you are buying tickets and it, it is what it is. I think it's terrible. Um, it, it sucks when you buy a $20 ticket and you have five or $10 in fees. It sucks, but that's unfortunately what the normal is. So uh, moving on, Tickera is a self-hosted ticket service. So what that means is that they've developed the plugin to use on your website and all of the ticket data, the orders, the settings, everything is on your web server wherever you're hosting your WordPress site. And that will lead us into another discussion here in a bit as to the added responsibilities and the obligations that this puts on you. Um, but more on that in a minute. So in trying to find information about them online because like I said there weren't many reviews, I found that some people who seemed to allude to the fact that their support was non-existent and no one would respond to their support requests. And I have to say that that is absolutely the furthest from the truth. I mean, I, I don't know if that was the case in 2014, but that's been the furthest from the truth. I've sent in numerous tickets to them, and most were just general questions about their plugin and how to the best way to do something and maybe how to achieve something. Um, I did find a few very minor bugs, which I reported, and they did fix in a timely manner and put out an update. But the support has been fantastic. So Tikera, they have many add-on plugins to extend the features of their plugin which is nice because you know you only need to add on the features that you want so it can be the the plugin can be very heavy or as light as you need it so you can only act you know you can activate the ones that you you need for your specific case they have check-in apps for iOS Android and your desktop computer and so we're gonna get more into the ticket check-in process later in the video Tickera has great documentation online and a few questions that I sent tickets in about could have actually been answered if I spent more time reading their documentation on their website. So that was my fault and then once I learned that they had such good documentation, um, I actually started going there first before ask, asking my question. So check my description, I'll link to their support documentation and you can actually learn a lot just by reading through it uh, you know, before even having the plugin. So one of the questions that I had before I bought the plugin was how the tickets were stored on the web server. And the PDF tickets are actually instantly, they're available for download right after they check out. And the individual PDF tickets are not stored on your website, which is good because that would take up a lot of room. And so instead what happens is when a user checks out, they get an order details URL to download the tickets and Tickera generates the PDF on the fly and downloads to their computer even when the PDF is generated it is not stored on your web server it's just basically generated when they click on the link it downloads you know through their browser just like a download and it's not ever stored on your web server which is very nice so let, let's talk about some of the competitors um, one of the ones that I looked into was Ticket Tailor they also have a WordPress plugin and if you watch the Tickera promo video and the Ticket Tailor promo video on WordPress, they look almost identical in terms of, of how they work and how to check people in. However, Ticket Tailor is not a self-hosted ticketing solution, so you create the event on their website and users buy tickets through Ticket Tailor, not yours, and Ticket Tailor charges per ticket or you can sign up for a monthly plan. But the problem in my case is that um, the customer that I was hired to redo their website for and implement a new ticketing system their event is only once per year. It's a large two-day event, so I wasn't going to sign up for a monthly plan, but even more importantly is that on their site, as of this video, is if you sell more than 750 tickets, you have to contact them for a quote. So to me, this seemed like a, a low number because my client's event venue that I'm dealing with can hold 4,000 people. And uh, not that they sell out, um, it gets almost sold out, but um, it's a two-day event, so if, if we did sell out, we're talking 8,000 tickets, so um, Ticket Tailor was out of the question. It, the price was just way too expensive. S then you have other popular ones like Eventbrite, Event Espresso. At the end of the day, some of these other solutions, 
um, couldn't do either seating charts or the fees were too expensive in my opinion I liked the idea of doing self hosted tickets so people wouldn't have to leave the website in order to to do the tickets because it's on your website and so I think the experience on the other end is better when you just can do everything on the actual website of that of, you know of the customer so um, I told those people who hired me what their options were and what the risks were and why you might choose one over the other and they decided that the risk and reward was worth it to give Ticara a try. They had the ability to save over 5000 or more um, from what their current ticket company was and the risk was that the there was a potential that it might not work out very well but to be honest their previous year of ticket sales with their other company went so bad that they felt like they had already hit rock bottom and even if Ticara didn't work out for this year that we just did um, and even if it didn't work out as good as we had hoped, that they already had a disastrous year and that it was so bad that now is the time to take that risk to give it a try because it couldn't get any worse than what it already was. So we bought Ticara with the one-year license just to try it out because we didn't want to do the lifetime license if we weren't going to use it again. And I started setting it up and configuring it. I spent probably a month perfecting everything. I was finishing out their website rebuild and was learning the Takara system. So let's finally talk about this self-hosted ticket thing that I keep mentioning. So self-hosted means that all of the data is being kept on your website server. If you pick another ticket company and you have to check out on their website for your event, it means that they are hosting the data for you. And so this takes the pressure from you because you don't have to worry about your website going down or you losing the data because that responsibility lies on the ticket company. But with Takara, that responsibility now falls on you. You're the source of the ticket orders, the downloading of tickets. If your website goes down or messes up, you're on the hook for fixing it, making sure the data doesn't get deleted before the event. So this means that you have to have a good WordPress backup system in place. For my customer, when we started going into their ticket selling season I was using a backup plugin to take scheduled daily backups you also need to make sure that uh, how you you know how you know how to restore the backups and if you don't do that very often you should test your process to make sure that you know how to and this will really tell you if your backups are good or not because this business hired me to to do ongoing management besides the redesign of their website I was okay with taking on the added risk of self hosting the ticket sales and so this is also why Takara is so much cheaper because you're not storing anything on their servers. They've developed something to give to you that you're going to then use on your website and you're handling all the data from there on. So an another thing to consider is what kind of hosting your website is currently on. Depending on the amount of ticket sales and traffic that you'll have, you should probably not be using a shared hosting package from like HostGator or Bluehost or any other budget cheap hosting provider. So, I mean, if you're only selling a handful of tickets, 50, 100, you know, then shared hosting is probably going to be just fine. But if you're doing much more than that, you probably need a VPS or a dedicated server. Um, a VPS server is a virtual server dedicated only to you. It means that you get those resources um, that you're paying for and that you don't have to share any computing power with other websites. So you can get VPS servers on the companies I mentioned but I was specifically talking about their shared offerings which most people use you know HostGator and Bluehost for their shared offerings because it is so cheap but I do all my website hosting on Amazon Web Services and this website that I redesigned was put on a, an AWS VPS server and it's the only website on the VPS so I won't put any other websites on that server and so far the performance has been fantastic. I, I monitor it when we were getting hit hard uh, during the ticket selling on the, the, on the two-day event, but we were also selling tickets eight months prior to that. And so um, I'll, I'll tell you what I was using. I think uh, I have it on a four gigabyte RAM to CPU VPS, and um, we sold 3,000 tickets. And on the, the largest days, I mean, we probably sold five or 600 on the actual days of the event both days and that's when we were hitting it very very hard and it just took it like a champ so that's what we're on uh, just to give you an example so four gigabytes of RAM two CPU VPS server with Amazon 
So let's talk about the check-in apps. I'm going to also play a video that I took of the event that we we're doing um, showing how we were handling our check-ins. But another reason that you need good hosting is because depending on how you do your check-ins, every time you scan a ticket, it will m be making a call to your website, you know, your WordPress database, making sure that the ticket is valid and allowed to check in. So if you have thousands of people coming to an event like we did, we were scanning ticket after ticket, and you, didn't, you need to make sure that your hosting is good and fast enough to keep up with the amount of requests that are hitting your database. So you can do check-ins online and offline with Takara. You don't need an internet connection at your venue to check in. But that means that you'll mostly be forced to use their Chrome desktop app to check people in. And uh, it's a very, very good app. But before you get to the event, you'll need to make sure you have internet access to download the ticket data. Um, and then once it's downloaded once, you don't need internet connection anymore. So you need it once to get the data onto the Chrome app. After that, you don't need it. Um, now I will say we used um, Google Chromebook laptops, just some cheap ones, because all they need is to be able to check them in. And so when I had asked Takara if the Chromebooks were good enough to work, they said that they hadn't really had anybody that extensively used them. And so um, I used them, and I can say they worked flawlessly. They were just fine. Even with checking a couple thousand people, they were just fine. So we use a cheap Chromebook with the Takara Chrome app and uh, it worked great. So, th But the fastest way to check people in is with the Chrome desktop app and then you'll be using a, a barcode scanner which I'll link what we were using in the description so please check the description again. Or also if you, uh, you can also log into the back end of the WordPress website and you can scan people in from there. Either one is just as fast but with both of these options you would need to purchase a barcode scanner and uh, they're very cheap nowadays on Amazon so check my description but if you want to be able to scan barcodes off of cell phone screens you will need a 2D two-dimensional barcode scanner if you don't need that ability then you can just scan and you just want to scan off of paper so you're just um, you know making you're hoping that the user printed off the thing and weren't is not gonna the, the ticket and that they're not gonna just show it on their phone then if, if you just know that they're gonna have paper you can get a 1D one-dimensional scanner and 1D scanners are a lot cheaper than 2 well they're cheaper than 2D's but they're still both pretty cheap so in our experience the 2D scanners worked a heck of a lot better uh, if you're using the iOS or Android app you do need an internet connection because those apps do not download the data locally but it does make those uh, calls back to your database to verify the ticket so whether your phone is on the Wi-Fi or your phone is just on normal cellular data you do need some form of internet so scanning tickets with your phone is nice to have but if you're checking in a lot of people it will be slow because you're using your phone's camera and it's it works it's just not as fast as zapping it with the barcode scanner so that's why for large events and they even take care even recommends that you use a barcode scanner with the Chrome app for large events or directly through your WordPress back end with the scanner if you use your phone uh, like I said, you can scan off of both a phone or paper using the QR code and the phone apps. It uses your camera as the scanner and they don't support any third-party scanner that plugs into your phone. It's They just have their app uh, just works with the camera. So that's it's, it is a lot slower than using the, the barcode reader. On the tickets, so you can design how you want your ticket to look. That's the other nice thing about Takara. I mean, you have the you have literally you have pretty much full control. You you create your ticket, you create your event, you set your price, you can set your fee, uh, you can do seating charge, which, which is what we used it for. Every seat had to be picked, and so we had a big elabor elaborate seating chart, which I'll show you. Um, but you can design your ticket, and you, you would want to put most likely on your ticket both the one D and the two D barcode just in case that way you have flexibility to use one or the other you're not stuck with using one type of scanner so um, some things that Takara is not good at are box office sales so they're not a box office ticketing solution they're they built this and they say online that they built this for an online ticketing solution so what I mean is that if you need to sell tickets in person to someone who walks up to your ticket booth which we did and we Used, we did use this as a, a box office solution 
and we just kind of hacked it together and, and it worked pretty good because we do have internet there in the box office but it's this is technically not a box office ticketing solution and so we got around this with a workaround because my customer we do need to sell tickets on the day of the event for walk-ups um, but the workaround was to buy tickets from the front end um, at the box office so basically we're buying them from the front end just like you would be buying them um, from if you were just buying them before the event and then we used a, a free a, a discount code because you can create discount codes in the software uh, we used a discount code that would give it for free and then we collected the money at the window and then we printed off the ticket um, so it's, it's not the most ideal solution because when you check out at the ticket booth we, we you know we had to enter in all that stuff the cards uh, or take the cash and it just it was a little slow but it's you know we, we had to make it work because as we were buying tickets from the front end people were still buying tickets before they came out to our event online and so we had to for the seating charts we had to be doing it like that so it worked but it's not really meant for that if a customer so another thing that they may not they're not very good at is uh, if a customer buys many tickets let's just say 10 tickets or any amount it doesn't matter their PDF tickets cannot be downloaded in one click they have to click 10 individual download links to download their tickets or however many ticket links tickets they bought they have to click a download link for each ticket and this is just kind of a pain they have kind of talked about maybe fixing this in the future but they said that the problem in general of, of trying to combine tickets into one PDF is it sounds simple but it's actually a, a more complex problem than, than what it is so it's just kind of a pain but in the end you know it still works clicking the download links it's not that big of a deal but it's just more of a pain so a question that you might have is what problems did I run into I mean I, I just we just finished up a week and a half ago this large event we sold 3,000 tickets collected all this you know most of it through uh, that was all through online so um, you know I've talked a lot about the my specific success and how selling tickets worked um, but I did run into a few minor issues nothing major so uh, one time I updated my WordPress theme and as a result something happened and my order URLs when I when clicked would say the order did not exist and at first it freaked me out but I knew that I had backup so I knew I wasn't really that worried but um, when I checked the orders did exist and I could see it all in, in the dashboard on the back end and everything was good but the for whatever reason the URLs w weren't working and so what ended up being the issue on that uh, well I don't really know what caused it but it was fixed by simply deactivating and reactivating Takara and that the plugin just deactivate reactivate and that was it so very simple um, I found a, a few minor bugs that didn't affect the usability of the plugin at all I reported them and and they were fixed nothing major um, something, some things with date times and stuff like that, but those were fixed in a hurry. Uh, when purchasing a large number of tickets, like 30 or more at once, my web server would give an Nginx error because I'm hosting on a Linux server with using um, Nginx, and it was saying that the headers were too large or something like that. And basically, the order data that was going back into the database was too large for the web server to handle. And so to fix that, I did some Googling on what the Nginx error was and I needed to make some changes in my web server settings to allow the the larger header sizes that were coming because of the ticket data so that was not any way related to a ticket error issue but rather just some web server settings that I had to change on my part so other than that uh, we didn't have any issues I, we never the site never crashed we never had to restore from a backup um, it went very well so you, you just need to do a lot of time and planning ahead of time though uh, you know because like I said I spent a month just perfecting the take care of settings before we even went live with the website I mean because we weren't going to publish this until we had this all figured out and how it was going to work and then many months before the event I was making sure that the Wi-Fi at the event was going to be good enough planning out what to do in the event something happened so you just need to make sure that you have a plan of action laid out and naturally as you're selling these tickets you're going to learn this system and you're gonna know how it works and so you're gonna know it inside and out but if you have any tech questions about Takara or ticket sales on WordPress let me know in the description you know leave them in the comments um, if you need someone to help with Takara ticket implementation on your website or you need to switch your website hosting want to get into AWS 
you know, let me know. I, you can, you know, I can be hired to do some work like that. So let me know. I, I know this has been a lot of information. It's a lot longer video than I ever normally do, but it's really just impossible to relay everything I've done. I've done my best to hopefully not forget anything, but I may have. So just let me know in the comments if you have any questions and check my description as well. And, um, I just really hope this was helpful on telling you guys what worked for selling tickets in the most reliable and cheap way on your website. And uh, this saved a tremendous amount of time and money. And it's this plugin is just a huge bang for your buck and it's a no brainer. So I hope you guys use this ticket solution and, uh, appreciate you for sticking through this video and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks.